Hello and welcome to the Broadcast Tech Talks podcast, TV industry podcast from the Broadcast Tech team. My name's Jake Bickerton and I'm the editor of Broadcast Sport and Broadcast Tech magazines. Right, this episode of the Broadcast Tech Talks podcast is with Cara Kotsky. I hope I've pronounced your surname right there, Cara. No. <laughs> no? Okay, let's try that again. Kotsky. Kotsky. This episode of the Broadcast Tech Talks podcast is with Cara Kotsky. Yeah. Yeah. Ex-5050 Managing Director who left last year. And uh, we're going to find out what she's been doing since then and uh, her reasons for kind of moving on from a position where uh, you were 17 years, was it, Cara? 17 yeah. years. Yeah. I started um, 50, working at 5050 as a runner after six months, I think, after its inception. And um, wow. Yeah, so January 2004 was when I started. Right. And um, I mean, it was great. It was a tiny little company. I think I was employee number six. <laughs> and uh, all we did at the time was sort of short form picture um, services, so, you know, ads and corporates and that sort of thing. And then over time, kind of just sort of worked my way up. It was really fast paced. It was brilliant. You know, you kind of, you learn on the job, you know, so much. And we sort of, we worked incredibly hard. We partied pretty hard as well. Um, but it was really good. And then after, I think, six years, I was made MD, which is pretty mad. Um, yeah by most sort of standards. And I think, you know, I often get asked actually, how did that happen? Yeah, you're um, so very young. Yeah, I was really young. I was yeah. um, I was 28 actually, yeah, 28, amazing. 29, something like that. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, like a lot of these things, they come with like incredibly hard work, but also just with luck, you know, like I was lucky in that um, it was a small team. It was moving really quickly. And there were changes at the top in terms of, um, you know, the owners. There were two owners to begin with and there was one. And and it just sort of worked. It worked well in my favor. And and then I always had ideas for what, you know, the business should be and what we should do. And, and it all just sort of came together, really. Um, and, yeah, I was MD for 10 years, which is hmm. a really long time. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. really stop to think, though, do you, sometimes? It just sort of continues. Yeah, there's a lot of changes in that decade as well, wasn't there? You know, it expanded quite quickly. Yeah, yeah, we did. I think under my sort of tenure, we did three major expansions. So we, we, we were in short form for a very, very long time and then decided, I think around the time of the sort of 2009 recession, to sort of dip our toe into the water of long form. And we just sort of, again, you know, like we, we learn on the job. But it was all sort of low risk sort of clip shows, you know, like 100 best goals, all that sort of thing. Going going forward a few more years, um, I think it might have been around the time that we were sort of um, dallying into like 4K HDR, starting to look at the Netflix SVOD sort of landscape. Mm. And we decided that actually we were definitely getting stronger now in long form. and We put all of our eggs in that basket. Businesses shouldn't be static because they'll become stale. They need to keep evolving, keep moving. And that's what we were able to do at 50-50, you know, with really great success. And then last year, it seemed to come out of the blue, even though you have been there for a decade, <laughs> that you decided to, to move on. I kind of knew, really, like I, I'd had it in my head that my time at 50-50 was coming to an end. As much as those challenges and the kind of exciting nature of 50 50 were great the family feel was like you know I've got some great friends there and it was it's a it's a lovely place to be and to work and create and all that sort of stuff um I knew like I'd, I'd known you know for a year or so before probably longer that I needed to move on now and do and do something else Post is about a series of challenges. Like that's what post production is. You're either finding like a solution for something technical or creative or a budget or a timeline or whatever it is. You've got to overcome a series of challenges. Mm. But the challenges at 50 50 were becoming more second nature to me. And I knew that I needed to go and do something else. Mm. And my husband said, in order to get a new role, I need to leave. And, and I was like, no, 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 I definitely need to be in a job to get a job. That's how you get a new job. <laughs> Actually, I do think he was right because I needed to sort of leave to reassess what I was going to do before moving on to the next thing. Hmm. I sort of spoke to Sally about it. Sally Pacey owns 50-50 and just said, look, I think it's my time to sort of leave. I think to everyone else, it probably <laughs> seemed like yeah. something really horrific had happened and it just hadn't. I mean, I think everyone thinks I might be pretty mad leaving such an amazing job in the face of a global 
pandemic but for me I just knew it was it was right and and yeah it was it was the right thing to do definitely I've been quite quiet since I think everyone thinks I've just gone to ground and like mm. maybe I took a job at Tesco's or something but <laughs> I just, so what, yeah what have you been doing since then since August it's well, almost a year well, well yeah I was on gardening leave and I honestly I recommend gardening leave that is such mm. a treat I knew what I didn't want to do I didn't want to go to like just a major competitor and then start mm. taking like the stuff away that I've been doing for so long at 50 50 like that was a certain but I didn't know what it was that I was going to do and Sally was like, like I think you just need time to decompress and that's such a true thing like that you know like there wasn't um it, th- yeah that that kind of processing thing to kind of go right okay I need to park that 17 years and now think about what that future is was really important so hmm. gardening leave was really great for that my only strategy to get a job was to put like a big for sale sign out on LinkedIn. Like that's all I, <laughs> that's all I had in me. And I, <laughs> I needed people to know that I was available. Um, and that was really good because what that did was actually open doors to, to, to businesses I, I wouldn't have considered. I didn't really know much about. Also, I just sort of did um, some consultancy Um two business no three businesses sort of like dropped me a line to say you know would you want to take a job and I was like not not really I don't really want (laughs) (laughs) that whole decompression thing I wasn't ready to just jump into a massive Mm. role and so for uh, for two sort of companies in the end I ended up consulting and one was a big like global I guess sort of broadcast enterprise really and the other company was like a much smaller sort of commercial post house these opportunities just came out of a, a post on LinkedIn. Yeah, right. turns out I hadn't realised that my I had quite a big profile from working at fifty fifty. That like, you don't know these things. You just mm. kind of put your head down, and the job is to make this facility as its best possible self. One of the things I noticed when I left major facility is that actually this industry is well, it's tiny, and I've really got a lot of affection for it. You might do a, a massive deal worth hundreds of thousands of pounds over a lunch it's just mad the people you know the the way this whole thing ticks over it's it's really lovely but it's very very niche and I was really lucky to be quite a prominent figure somehow within that so I think that LinkedIn post really helped me so that's taken you to sort of now-ish um yes and you say it's kind of increased your confidence I suppose in the knowledge that you had uh, about post and the fact that you can apply that to other businesses in short form and long form and international so what's next? There are some exciting things afoot. I can't say like too much, but we've sort of spent some time like developing an idea, reflecting on post first, you know, like mm. that there's nothing, that there's nothing broken in the way that we do post. I don't think, I think it's an amazing industry. And I think the things that are achieved in terms of like creativity, technology, like I would never sit on the top of my tree and say, there's problems in this industry there aren't but I do think making sure that we're not static and we're always moving there are things that we can do better and I've kind of spent a lot of time just looking at what that might be in mm. terms of service offering you know like what would I do I'm working on developing you know something new for the industry and I'm looking at the whole post sort of offering you know end-to-end post is something that was a massive trend and still is of course I think you know if I'm bringing something new if I was going to bring something new to the market like now is it interesting to sort of look at niches I've been really working in a niche environment and looking at a niche offering so you can maybe do one thing but be the best at it it's quite interesting to me one of the big issues when you run a post house is I mean overhead overhead is significant you know yeah. in terms of building equipment and people hmm. and if you're going to you know, look at what the future looks like. I'm really interested in that kind of niche, really succinct, small offering of one service type. And maybe, you know, be the best. And then maybe you can add in services at other points perhaps. But I'm really interested in looking at what that might look like in um, a genre with like, you know, a, a strong kind of setup with less people perhaps less departments to fill, you know, because mm. again, you know, offering full posts are constantly thinking, okay, great, grade is doing really, really well. But we've got a lot of gap in audio or whatever mm. it might be. Mm. I mean, I guess it's less, sometimes it's less like that because you're offering everything, everything gets filled, but you know, you've got to kind of have your mind on loads of different areas, I guess. And I'm sort of looking at that and, you know, looking at like working culture, like 
I think again like we've got an amazing culture in this industry like whenever I say to people I haven't met you know who are new to me what do you do I work in post-production I have to explain what that is because <laughs> you know <laughs> why would they I didn't know 17 years ago you know I always sort of say it's a really nice industry because it is relaxed and you know yes we work incredibly hard and we have to deliver things and that can get pretty hairy sometimes but really it's a really nice relaxed industry there's not it's not very corporate but I think there's something really interesting in like creating a sort of culture where you get to decide can I decide like how I'm an adult can I decide how I run my time can you decide yours what about holiday do I need to tell you you've got 20 days holiday or can you do that yourself you know like just sort of really exploring how that might look mm. um in a business i think that's quite interesting mm. like technology what's happened in the last 12 months and what what we can do now what, what's going to happen in the next 12 months to really kind of hone in on what we've achieved and um mm. that's really cool corporate structure again it's like okay business have always been built in the same way but can we mix that up a bit like is there a shared ownership option or co-ops these could be ideals that aren't really achieved, but just exploring like what what the future looks like and how you might be able to not reinvent the wheel, just make it a bit more rounded, I think. I've been looking at diversity. I think that's like really shameful, I think, mm. like in all kinds of areas. And, I'm, you know, like I think you immediately jump to things like ethnicity, but there's culture as in terms of different backgrounds, um, you know, uh, gender, um disabilities neurodiversity there's loads of different mm. sort of areas that i don't think you know we've explored well enough how can we change actually how can we bring in different types of people from different backgrounds and different thought processes to actually benefit our own businesses and benefit the industry generally i think that there's so much that we can do in those areas and and yeah just thinking about how we go about making money like wh why is that our major focus and how if we focus on other things will that happen anyway like just mm. yeah that's what I've been doing it sounds very ambitious and I mean obviously it's sort of slightly difficult to visualize exactly how this will sort of pan out but it's sounding Maybe. a little bit like there might be some office space as part of this and kind of a traditional set up but then also it sounds like you know there's there's a lot more to it than that as well have you got a sort of vision i definitely do and i'm working with some great people you know who've got a solid commercial background who are brilliant in like picture and vfx and just amazing at what they do and you know together we're kind of thinking right okay how can we create something really cool in um a different sort of post space yeah, so I think bricks and mortar are really important. And I think clients are still going to want somewhere to go. Creating a destination is an interesting thing. So actually, there's almost an idea that you spend more money on more space, even though there might be less of you there. So yeah. I think that there's like lots of lots of um, games at play. It sounds very exciting. What, what are the sort of timescales for this new enterprise? It will depend on making sure that people would building it around the people we're bringing in essentially is what I'm trying to say so that would depend on timings of who we're talking to so we've already started talking to a couple of people so I'm hoping it's not going to be too long <laughs> wow okay yeah so, yeah. Sounds, yeah very exciting but you've got these ideas to bring in a more diverse workforce if you can have this kind of flexible approach maybe this co-ownership as well of the talent getting involved in the business structure as well is there anything else you want to sort of say about this new model? If we are able to bring something new to the market, then we um, uh, we will be kind of blessed with like not having legacy sort of debt, legacy technology. You're yep. building something brand new around the people that, you know, who want to be part of it. So that enables us to do things differently, I think. Fantastic. So it's kind of watch this space for early next yeah. year, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a call, Jake, when it's time to talk again. Yeah, we could do part two of this podcast. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All, right, All right. Thanks, so, Jake. Yeah. Thanks very much, Cara. Look after yourself. You too. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a rating on your podcast provider. I'll see you next time for the next episode in the Broadcast Tech Talk series. Bye.